Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Good morning. Welcome to Smart Companies Thinking Bigger Radio. I'm Kelly Scanlon, publisher of Thinking Bigger Business Media. And I just have to ask you as we start off here, do you need more strategies to get others on board with your ideas? Come on, raise your hands. I know we all need that. Are you ready to increase your visibility, your credibility, your connections, and your results? Again, I bet there's not too many out there who can't say yes to that. And are you eager to make the transition from being not just a leader in your company, but to being a thought leader in your niche? There is a difference. And our guest today is a Silicon Valley executive talent agent with startup and Fortune 500 clients from companies like Apple, Genentech, KPMG, and Cisco. She's also a professional runner. She runs her own business. She runs after her two kittens, and she's also been run, known to run significant distances when there's chocolate involved. Today's guest has an MBA from Stanford Business School and was recently recognized by the White House as a champion of change. She has joined us today from her home in California to share her strategies for how to take the leap from leader to thought leader. Denise Brousseau, we're so happy to have you with us today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So happy to be here. Yes. Okay, let's first find out a little bit more about you, Denise. You describe yourself as an executive talent agent. So what does that mean? What does that entail if you're an executive talent agent? Well, the way I look at it is that there is so much need for us to have someone to focus on our career. There's executive recruiters who are helping companies find the right people. I work on the other side of that equation. I work with the executive who's trying to get noticed in their company, helping them message or for them, themselves for promotion, to help them connect to the right boards and committees, get out speaking and writing. I also work with CEOs who are really trying to get the same notice in the world, but really noticed in their industry. So I'm working really to position folks for that next opportunity and really giving them the chance to understand what it takes to get known in their field as that go-to person. Mm -hmm. so, so one way you might look at this is that you're helping them to create a personal brand to a certain extent. That, that is absolutely, yeah, absolutely a piece of it. And I call my company Well Connected Leader because I also think it's about connections. So it's yeah. one thing to you know, really understand what your brand is. It's another thing to get known for that brand because mm -hmm. it isn't as much about, you know, it's both of pieces. It's somebody who has to know you, but you also have to be known in the world and people you have to be connected to. Absolutely. And, you know, we hear a lot these days about thought leadership. But what's the difference? between being a thought leader and being an expert, or is there a difference? Well, I, I actually love to say that, that experts are all about wanting you to know how much they know, but oh. thought leaders want you to know as much as they know them as well. So it's this idea of being able to share what you know. That's a thought leader, somebody who's willing to blog or speak or connect you to the information that they have. They, they want to be the person who that access. So rather than sitting back and saying, look at how wonderful and smart I am, they are really out about sharing that information more broadly and bringing others on board with their ideas, growing a following around those ideas. Okay. And that, that is a huge difference. Uh, somebody who's an expert that maybe can be quoted um, occasionally in a, in a newspaper article or uh, put out some white papers, but a thought leader is somebody, like you said, who shares that information and typically shares it in a way that, at least from what I understand about it, shares it in a way that's practical so that it's useful to other people. It, it's not just um, some theoretical thing that lays in a research report somewhere. Absolutely. And what we like to know about thought leaders is that they themselves have done what they're talking about. So they didn't yeah. study it in a book. It's not theory, but it's in practice. And they're giving you the practical learning tips, the best practices, and ideas so that you don't make the same mistakes, that you can move more quickly doing the same thing that they have done already that they're sharing their practical experience and knowledge of firsthand. Right. Now, one of the things that you mentioned a few minutes ago was that you help executives and CEOs build their thought leadership. So what, what's the reason for doing that? How can that help them in their companies, in their careers? Well, I look at it from a, a really practical perspective. You know, one of the things for people in big companies is it's very hard to get over, it's very hard to get noticed very easy to get overlooked. And so what we have to be thinking about is how are we positioning and messaging ourselves internally. For women particularly, we have challenges with that brag piece. 
really getting uh, the momentum around our career, getting sponsors and mentors to be really speaking up for us. And that all takes some thinking and some strategizing and some preparation. And so I'm all about helping people with that proof point to help them really think forward and build the right connections internally to get noticed. Sometimes that's also happening externally, right? In a lot of cases, if you are known in your, as a, on a board or a committee or you're actively out speaking or you're involved in an industry uh, organization, those folks that are involved with those groups can also be helping you because they're speaking to people in your company and calling out what an expert you are, what a thought leader you are, and that is actually going to give you the, the impetus uh, internally as well as other people start to recognize your your expertise more broadly. Right. And you've been talking quite a bit about uh, individuals and executives within organizations. And uh, we, we also reach, the show also reaches a lot of small to mid-sized business owners. And one of the things in working with, with that group, they're so focused on their businesses that they often think they don't have time to go out, or they don't even realize that after all the years of hard work they put into building that business, that they truly have become a very knowledgeable source of information about their industry, maybe about entrepreneurship or small business in general. And it's it's a mindset shift sometimes for them to understand that the next stage in helping their company isn't necessarily so much about opening up another market, but it's about sending you out there as the face for your company and building it that way. And and so uh, this, this applies to so many different groups, what you're talking about, you know, executives within companies, but also small business owners um, and, and other business leaders, nonprofit leaders even. So I couldn't agree with you more. And one of the things we know, having worked for many years in my career with entrepreneurs, is that mm-hmm. the CEOs that come to me, they absolutely recognize that that head down, just working <laughs> internally, is like the worst thing you can do for your business because yeah. it is, again, it's about being known in your in your market space and your industry as that go-to person. If you're out, again, speaking or writing or you're the person who's doing an op-ed or you're the one who's getting appointed to a city-wide uh, committee on, on an issue that you know about and care about or much more broadly at the national level, if you're being appointed to a presidential commission on a, on a topic that yeah. you know about, that is going to get you much further with your business opportunities for growing and scaling your, your small business. Right. So let's talk a little bit about that transition because for some people it's not quite so difficult, but for quite a few people that transition from being a leader in your company, whether it's being an executive within a larger corporation or whether it's because you're the CEO of your own business, um, what what is entailed in that transition from being a leader to a thought leader? How do you guide people through that process? What's important? Well, I really look at it as sort of a, a couple of steps process. So I'm, I've been really studying this deeply recently around a book that I'm writing on this topic, and I, and I looked at it as a set of steps, of one of which is really understanding your sort of professional sweet spot. And that is, in fact, a piece of it is your brand. But there's also a bit about what is your driving passion behind what you do. You know, it's uh, what Simon Sinek calls your why, really understanding and being able to pinpoint where your expertise and your interests overlap with an urgent problem that needs to be solved. So in most cases, in a business owner, that's why you're starting a business. It's because you see an urgent problem and you have some expertise and interest. Being able to really quickly articulate that and then being able to catalyze conversations around that idea that you might have, bringing this right stakeholders together, getting input, identifying trends, then nurturing all the champions and, and identifying folks who really help you to push that idea forward. And that's part of what it takes to build a business, but it's also what it takes to move an industry, to move folks to that next uh, step and move along against a, a tide of people who are likely saying, saying, no, you can't do this. And then there's really having a lot of point two proof, you know, being able to have measurable, verifiable evidence that says you're this authority, you're this credibility, uh, that you are the person that can do this and execute on it. All of those are pieces. There's, of course, a little bit more of it. But one of the last pieces that I'll talk about is just this idea of being willing to, to put yourself on shout, as I call it, you know, really get out there and build your your strategic visibility by being externally focused instead of internally focused. Right. And I I would go so far as to assume, make the assumption that 
uh, to do this, uh, that transition process, you would need to have a written plan for that just as you would for any marketing endeavor that you're doing with your company, um, that you have one just for that. I mean, is, is that correct that you absolutely approach it that way? Advice. That's the, the way that we approach it at our, our company, and it's certainly what I speak about when I go out and speak on this topic because it's so easy to overlook uh, what's coming forward when you're just focused on your business goals instead of focused on your leadership goals. And so it is, and you could tie those two plans together, but you need to really think through, how am I going to move from sort of being a, a known person in the local community to maybe regionally and then in your state and then nationally? So it's a, there is a strategic process of using the press and using uh, various opportunities that you might get even just in your local chamber to, to get noticed and then broadening that. So having a plan of how many media mentions you want and how much you're going to use social media and how much you're going to, to use committees and boards and commissions, all of that should be on your plan and thought through. And then building other uh, advisors to help you and maybe masterminds or, or strategic folks like me who can really help you to identify those opportunities and move forward. Absolutely, and you actually took the next question right out of my mouth for some of the people who are listening and thinking, you know, this is, this is probably the point where I'm at here, but they're not really sure who they should tap. Uh, you just gave us quite a nice little list. Start start with some of the relationships you already have. Who do you know in your chamber? Who, Which media contacts do you have? And, and then just start building from there uh, because... Uh, there, it's, it's funny, especially with social media. Uh, you have to have a plan and you have to work it. But if you if you do work it, how things can go viral. Um, it, people think yeah, that that's, yeah, yeah, people think that that's just happenstance, and occasionally it is. But most of the time, uh, the things that appear to just go viral, there's been a lot of hard work and planning behind that. <laughs> <laughs> You're so right. And, and you know, we we love those stories of the people who an accidental overnight success. But I mm-hmm. think that that there is the strategic process that goes into that, the strategic thinking that goes into that is really an important step, but it's just stop and take the time, even if it's still, uh, you know, I have one client of mine, every quarter she goes away, locks herself in a hotel from Friday afternoon until Sunday night late, and she just works on her, her planning and implementation of her ideas for that coming quarter. And so now she's got it all ready, her blog posts, her her plans for an upcoming speech, et cetera. It's all there every quarter. Right, right. Now, when I introduced you, I noted some of the major companies that you have worked for. Tell us a little bit. Give us some examples of some of the thought leaders that you've worked with. Sure. Um, you know, one of the, the things, the company, one of the companies I mentioned is Genentech, and they went through a big acquisition about two years ago, and one of the senior executives there, we worked on really positioning her to get noticed within this much, much more enormous company and, and get a really strategic promotion as a result of the, the acquisition. You know, I work with startup CEO, um, one of the more recent ones is someone who I helped to really identify ways to differentiate his company within his marketplace. So he's working in the speech recognition field, and that is uh, not necessarily a crowded market, but it's an unknown state. So we had to really differentiate and identify opportunities to really get known by the folks who would potentially be buying his technology. And then I worked with a financial executive more recently, you know, really identifying organizations for her to scale her network and build her clientele, you know, using the press and using other uh, strategic organizations around her region, getting her awards and identifying opportunities for her to speak. So these are the kinds of folks, I mean, I just love the kind of work that I get to do because there's so much variety and there's so many uh, just wonderful people who are ready to take the next step, and, and I and so enjoy the process of helping them to identify those next opportunities. Yes, and your passion is quite evident as you speak, and you must uh, have an enormous electronic Rolodex because you need <laughs> so many different industries, and to help people make those connections with all those diverse industries means that you know quite a few people yourself. So, And that's something that uh, I wanted to bring up, too. You're writing a book right now on thought leadership, and obviously you go into any project uh, knowing a certain amount, but you, as you go through the project, and in this case writing the book, you always learn so much more than you thought you you knew. So so what have you learned during this process of writing the book? What have you learned about thought leadership? 
Well, one of the things I've learned is that there are so many different kinds of reasons why people become thought leaders. And, you know, I've been able to interview folks from so many different walks of life. There are people who are really looking for the opportunity to be thought leaders because their company demands it, you know, often with accountants and lawyers and bankers, to really to break out, as it were, from all of that field of everybody who do the, does the same exact work as you do, you really need thought leadership to get to the top of your company or if you're building your own uh, firm. The, that is a critical component. Then you have nonprofit leaders, and they are really often working around a cause. So I interviewed a woman, for example, who built a program for foster children who had been separated from their siblings. And she had this was something that had happened to her, had a real cause reason for building for thought leadership and, and getting recognized. So there's lots of different reasons. There's certainly the reasons of visibility and credibility and reputation, but there's also this uh, often a very strong cause center around why people do this work because you've got to keep getting up and, and, and working this and so you can't give up easily and having that cause is a really good, good uh, purpose-filled direction goal, right. I think. Right. You know, one of the things I read, um, because you talked about, you know, putting yourself on shout. I absolutely love that phrase. Um, there's a way to do that, though, so that you don't come across sounding like a know-it-all, that you actually sound like you're somebody who is willing to share and that you're trying to um, – provide this knowledge so that other people can latch onto it and use it for their purposes. So so talk to us about that fine line, because what I read once is that if you have to say, tell somebody that you're an expert or tell somebody, hey, I'm a thought leader or I'm a subject matter expert, then you're really not. If that's something <laughs> that, you know, and, and I, I'm sure you know what I'm getting at here. Yes. But, but what it, how, do you, how do you straddle that fine line so that you get your message out but you don't come across as a, a big-headed know-it-all, seriously. It's really, yeah, no, it's a very important question. And I think that there are two main things that I share with people. One is always thinking about what's in it for them. This mm -hmm. isn't about you. This is about your audience and your potential followers or fans. So thinking about what's in it for them, what do they need to know, what do you know that they need to know, that's the first piece. Mm -hmm. And the second piece is to really recognize that this is about building trust. And not a step-by-step -step process. You know, the first time you meet someone, you don't ask them to marry you. You really want to, think about it, right? you want to think about that sort of process by which that occurs, getting people on board with your ideas. And it is a step-by-step -step process. I sort of call it the, the putting the pin on somebody like you do with a, a candidate all the way up to putting a billboard in their front yard. I mean, there are steps in that process with a political candidate and getting on board with that. And I try to help people think about that that pin to the bumper sticker to the billboard, and how do you make that transition? Mm. Very very good advice there. You know, you've made the transition yourself. I mean, you've been in this, this chair where, you know, you've moved to being a thought le leader, particularly in women's entrepreneurship. And so tell us a little bit about how that journey has unfolded to get you where you are right now. Sure. I uh, started an organization in Silicon Valley called the Forum for Women Entrepreneurs, and over a few years, we scaled that organization across seven cities uh, across the western United States. And then I also worked with a group in Washington, D.C. and Boston to start a, a venture conference called Springboard, which continues today, hmm. really working with uh, trying to help women entrepreneurs get the venture funding that they wanted for scaling big businesses. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a result of both of those efforts that I became known as one of really the three people in the United States who knew anything about this high-growth, venture-funded, women-led startup. And as a result, got really moved from being locally known to being regionally known and then nationally known and got enormous opportunities uh, with the press and with, with lots and lots of speaking but also had some really fun opportunities. I, I love to share that one of the craziest things that happened is getting a call to be to come to Scotland and judge the business plan contest, the first one of its kind in the country of Scotland. And that oh, was how just, fun. Yes. I know. It was a wonderful experience. So that was a great transition, and it was a great education in what it takes and, and what you need to really do to prepare to be mm. that person who people call. Absolutely. Well, and Springboard is a wonderful organization. In fact, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be interviewing Amy Millman. Uh, so so uh, that, that'll be a lot of fun. Now, 
continuing your story. It has led you to, I know you did a, a big conference in Indiana uh, back in the spring, and, and one of our mutual good friends um, uh, helped to host that. So you, you met a lot of women entrepreneurs there. But then you're also, uh, you have something going on in uh, the fall with uh, the Women's Conference in California. Tell us about that. I do, and actually I'm doing that with Amy Millman of Springboard. I'm oh. on the <laughs> uh-huh. National Advisory Council of uh, Springboard, and we together are creating a program that's called the Dolphin Tank. Uh, this is something Springboard's done a few different times. And it's like the Shark Tank on television, one of my favorite shows, but mm-hmm. we actually think of ourselves as a friendly version of the Shark Tank. <laughs> <laughs> so if people go to the California Women's Conference website, uh, you can find a whole bunch of information about how to submit a two-minute video about your business. And we'll, get, we'll select seven folks to come up on stage at the conference and actually pitch their businesses and get ideas from our panel of judges. And we'll also have a whole bunch of resource providers, folks from Startup America and Chick CEO and a variety of different great groups are involved with us. And, of course, our Springboard folks. And we're really, our goal is to help women scale their business ideas to something really potentially worthy of Springboard uh, venture funding. Mm-hmm. What a wonderful opportunity for those women who will be selected to do that. Now, that is that website live now, you said? Yes, it is. And the conference is coming up in just uh, at the end of September. So the event is in Long Beach, and the opportunity is right now, actually. The deadline is in 10 days to submit your video to be selected. So I really urge people to look for the Dolphin Tank on the California Women's Conference website. Okay. Well, that's, that's great. When is your book coming out? Well, <laughs> fingers crossed, next year. <laughs> that, okay. That is one of the challenges of fitting that in around building a business is always uh, an opportunity for uh, tearing your hair out at times. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think we can all relate to that. So t- <laughs> tell, us, uh, tell us about your website, what, what uh, people might find on it that can help them with their businesses, uh, and you know, why they should go there. Well, wellconnectedleader.com is my website, and uh, I certainly blog a lot on on the topics that we're talking about, but also there's some resources there and just some information about about some of the things that we work with our, our consultees uh, about. And I hope to reach out to folks that can use our advice and counsel and uh, certainly love to meet some new folks through this connection. So thank you. Well, uh, again, go out to her website and uh, learn more about Denise. Denise, it has been such a pleasure having you on the show today. Uh, We'll have to have you back after your book comes out and find out more about what you've learned on thought leadership. But it's been very insightful talking to you today, and, and best of luck to you. Thank you so much. To all of you out there, have a great weekend, and we will be back next week with another guest who will help you grow your business. You're listening to Smart Companies Radio on Blog Talk Radio. Have a great weekend. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather.